What's up, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Da Vinci Cases. All right, so the way this works is we've got a clinical case followed by a board style question. So we're going to go through the question stem, point out the relevant clinical findings, take a look at the question and the answer choices, and then kind of divert for a minute and go through the relevant concepts to answering the question. Then we'll come back and apply those concepts that we went over to answering the question. All right, so for this case, we have a 57 year old man, so middle aged man, presenting to the emergency room with nausea, vomiting, severe pain over the right upper quadrant that began four hours ago. So we've got a middle-aged guy, he's coming in with an acute presentation, you know, it says it began four hours ago, this isn't some chronic issue he's been dealing with. Nausea, vomiting, severe pain over the right upper quadrant, those kind of all give the knee-jerk reaction of acute cholecystitis, which this certainly could be. Some other things you definitely want to consider though are liver, because remember the liver is in the right upper quadrant, so some type of uh, liver pathology. The other things you want to consider are biliary tree pathology, so some obstruction in the biliary tree, uh, either from a stone or from a malignancy. You could also consider, you know, other things like pancreatitis, appendicitis can also present. Not as commonly, usually that's kind of more either epigastric and pancreatitis or right lower quadrant for appendicitis. But again, sometimes, you know, things can present in abnormal ways. Vitals in the ER are a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius, so that's, he's definitely febrile. He has a heart rate of 92, so he's definitely a little bit tachycardic. Blood pressure is 146 over 87, so he's hypertensive. Respirations are 21, which is pretty normal, and then O2 sat of 98%, so he's breathing well on room air. As far as his tachycardia and his high blood pressure, this could be just in response to the pain. The important thing to note here is he is febrile. He does have this right upper quadrant pain that has this concern for some type of acute pathology, either in the liver or the biliary tree or the gallbladder. If he had come in with a blood pressure of, say, you know, 60 over 40 or something and was, you know, severely hypotensive, then you start worrying about a sepsis type picture. Now, just because he doesn't have sepsis doesn't write at this moment doesn't mean he could very easily and quickly progress to that. So you definitely want to keep that in mind kind of in a practical knowledge uh, perspective. But as far as this question goes, he is febrile, but he is not uh, hypotensive or septic at this point. So physical exam reveals jaundice, which is, you know, yellowing of the skin, which is usually due to buildup of bilirubin. And so again, kind of pointing towards liver pathology, biliary, biliary tree pathology for sure. Right upper quadrant tenderness, so this confirms what the patient is telling us. And then a negative Murphy sign. So this is interesting. Even though he's got right upper quadrant tenderness, remember the Murphy sign is specifically to test for gallbladder inflammation because that gallbladder wall gets really inflamed and then it gets kind of closer to the surface, and then when you palpate and press deeply in, kind of below the uh, costal border there. Now, this is actually a pretty specific physical exam finding, so this is kind of making me lean a little bit away from just acute cholecystitis. Certainly still in the differential, but I'm not so convinced right now that that is the definite diagnosis. Jaundice, this tells me there could be some kind of obstruction in the biliary tree, causing a backup of uh, bile into the liver, and then as a result of that, you have increased uh, bilirubin getting into the blood, causing this patient to be jaundice. And then some examples of that can be uh, obstruction from malignancy, a gallstone obstructing it. You can also get jaundice from other liver disease like cirrhosis, liver failure, those types of things as well. Um, so we'll look into the labs here uh, to kind of give us a better picture. So the labs are notable for a total bilirubin of 3.3 milligrams per deciliter. The normal range is 0.1 to 1.2. So 3.3 is certainly ha much higher than 1.2. So this is pretty elevated bilirubin. Given that he's jaundiced, not surprised. This is also further pointing towards, you know, maybe some type of biliary tree obstruction or pathology. Alanine aminotransferase, or ALT, one of the liver enzymes, is 73 units per, per liter. Normal is 7 to 55. So this is, it's elevated, but it's not severely elevated. Same thing with aspartate aminotransferase, or AST, which is the other liver enzyme we typically look at. 68 units per liter. Normal range is 8 to 48. So these liver enzymes are mildly elevated. So what that tells me is it's not necessarily a liver failure or cirrhosis or anything like that. You'd see these, you would expect these to be much higher than that or some kind of acute liver toxicity, like if someone had like overdoses on Tylenol or something like that, some type of drug that's hepatotoxic, you would see much, much higher liver enzymes than this. So this is, you know, that being said though, 
again, if there's an obstruction in the biliary tree and bile is backing up into the liver, because remember, although bile is stored in the gallbladder, it is made in the liver. And so if it comes backs up into the into the liver, that can eventually affect the liver function and cause these enzymes to be increased. And then alkaline phosphatase is 500 units per liter and the normal range is 40 to 150. So this is significantly elevated. And this often points to, you know, either gallbladder pathology or biliary tree pathology. Um, so when this is elevated, you definitely want to be thinking in that uh, area of pathology for sure. Then you take a lipase of 27 units per liter. Remember lipase is a pancreatic enzyme. Normal is zero to 140. So this is within the normal range. That makes it less likely that this is pancreatitis or for example, a gallstone obstructing the pancreatic duct. That's called gallstone pancreatitis. And then a white blood cell count of 23,000 per liter. Normal is 4,500 to 11,000. So this is an elevated white count. So then the question is asking, which of the following is most likely obstructed in this patient? The answer choices are cystic duct, common bile duct, main pancreatic duct, and ileocecal valve. So this is a question of not only knowing biliary pathology, but also knowing um, your anatomy and knowing where this obstruction would be in the anatomical structure of the biliary tree. So let's summarize these key findings. We've got a middle-aged man with acute severe right upper quadrant pain accompanied by nausea and vomiting. He's febrile, tachycardic, and hypertensive. His exam re reveals jaundice. It confirms the right upper quadrant tenderness, but it has a negative Murphy sign, kind of pointing us away from acute cholecystitis. Labs reveal significantly elevated bilirubin and ALK-FOS, mildly elevated ALT and AST, normal lipase, and an elevated white count. Now, the differential includes acute cholecystitis, cholecystitis, ascending cholangitis, and then gallstone pancreatitis. We'll go through all of those and, and uh, be able to point out where anatomically those are affected and kind of the different presentations involved with those. But as far as to kind of start us out with what the answer is, location of the, that is most likely obstructed in this patient is the common bile duct. Now, to go over that, we need to kind of review some of the liver and more so the biliary tree anatomy. So as you can see here, we have a, a picture of the liver. And remember, bile is made in liver and stored in the gallbladder. And then eventually it goes through the biliary tree and gets secreted into the duodenum to help with digestion of fats. And if you remember the anatomy, you have your right hepatic duct and your left hepatic duct that drain all these intrahepatic biliary ducts that are carrying bile uh, that's synthesized in the liver. So then the bile comes through and it joins in here. And these right and left hepatic ducts then join to form the common hepatic duct. This is not the same as the common bile duct. It, the common hepatic duct merges with the cystic duct, which is seen here draining the gallbladder. So the gallbladder drains via the cystic duct. The cystic duct joins with the common hepatic duct, and that forms the common bile duct, okay? Then the common bile duct is distally joined by the pancreatic duct, which is carrying all those pancreatic enzymes for digestion. And then those two join together, and they form what's called the ampulla of vatter, and this is uh, what joins with the duodenum. And then you have the sphincter of Odi in here, which kind of regulates passage of both bile and pancreatic enzymes into the duodenum to help with digestion. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break from the case right now to let you know that DaVinci Cases is brought to you by DaVinci Academy, which provides online video courses for the medical basic sciences. These courses are taught using a variety of teaching methods, including bullet point outlines, diagrams, radiology images, and chalk talks, to explain the fundamental concepts. We then teach the application of those concepts to numerous clinical pearls that are frequently tested on medical school exams and the USMLE. Our video courses are available on our website, dviacademy.com, as monthly subscriptions starting at $9.99 per month. Each video course has a corresponding outline format textbook as well. You can find the link to our website in the description below. Also be sure to use the discount code DC20 to receive 20% off any of our video courses. Now back to the case. The first thing we'll go over here of these five different uh, things on our differential is cholelithiasis. So cholelithiasis, and remember, these terms, the reason I'm going through these is these, these terms, they all sound very similar. It's very easy to get these confused. And so you definitely wanna be able to know the difference because this, this stuff, all this anatomy, these terms, these pathology, really high yield. Step one, step two, step three, super high yield, super high yield for anatomy exams, pathology exams, even on like your medicine shelf exams, definitely on a surgery shelf exam, you could definitely get asked about this kind of stuff. So for cholelithiasis, 
whenever you see lithiasis, so there's nephrolithiasis, which is stones in the kidney, cholelithiasis, which is stones in the gallbladder, all this means is just stones, the presence of stones. So it's the presence of one or more gallstones in the bladder. There's no obstruction. There's a lot of people walking around with cholelithiasis or just simply gallstones in their gallbladder. So you can see these kind of yellow circles here represent stones. There's no obstruction. Often these are asymptomatic. Now, what happens is one of these can get shot down into the cystic duct cause an obstruction and then you have a buildup of bile here and then bile backs up and builds into builds up into the gallbladder here and then the gallbladder can get super the wall can get inflamed you can get you know inflammation you can get pericholecystic fluid which is that fluid kind of building up around here and that's how you get cholecystitis so it's infl so cholecystitis remember itis just means inflammation you have inflammation of the gallbladder caused by buildup of bile resulting from gallstone obstruction through the cystic duct now, cholidocolithiasis, again, lithiasis, present of a stone. So cholidoco refers to the common bile duct. So this is simply just the presence of a gallstone in the common bile duct. This is the common bile duct equivalent of cholelithiasis. So it's just present. There's not necessarily an obstruction. You could have a partial obstruction. Again, there's no significant buildup. Maybe there's a, a small amount of buildup, but at this point, it's not at the point where it's causing a, an infection or inflammation or anything like that. The patient's probably on their way there in this case, but in this case, when you're just giving a diagnosis of cholidocolithiasis, the patient isn't quite there yet. On ultrasound, you could see some dilation. You definitely could see a stone in here. So ascending cholangitis, this is when you have obstruction of the common bile duct. It could be due to a gallstone. It also could be due to an obstruction from a tumor. So if you have a tumor that's kind of growing around, and then obstructs such as like a pancreatic tumors will do this a lot uh, well they'll come in kind of in the pancreatic head they'll obstruct so it could be a tumor could also be like a cholangial carcinoma which is a tumor of the biliary tree that could also do it so it could be a tumor or a gallstone gallstones are usually much more common either way you're going to have buildup of bile and then what's going to eventually happen is is when you you know obstruct some kind of channel in the body over time, what happens is you have this buildup of either fluid or biliary sludge in this case. That's kind of a breeding ground for bacteria. So what happens is bacteria are going to build up in here and then cause an infection that's then going to inflame the common bile duct. And then what happens is it's called ascending because then what's going to happen is, is it's going to ascend up the biliary tree and then can even ascend into the liver and affect the liver as well. And then gallstone pancreatitis is where a gallstone comes down and then obstructs the pancreatic duct and it's the same thing you have buildup of pancreatic fluid and then pancreatic enzymes and as a result of that you get pancreatitis so in our patient what we have is this patient has a gallstone that has caused an obstruction you have a buildup of bile you have this infection ascending and it's affecting the liver that's why his liver enzymes are slightly elevated the biliary tree is severely inflamed that's why his alkphos is elevated again you have this bacteria that's ascending in that's what's causing the fever the elevated white count now what happens is, is that eventually this all of this this infection can ascend and then get into the bloodstream and that's how you these patients can get sepsis and they can become critically ill very quickly lastly here this is a kind of a rare thing but it does show up on exams a lot so again you have the whole biliary tree here what happens is, is you can have a, a gallstone obstructing the gallbladder here and what happens is the gallbladder gets really inflamed chronically, so kind of chronic cholecystitis. It forms a fistula between the gallbladder and the duodenum or the small bowel. So it's called a cholecystoenteric fistula. So that serves as a fistula is just kind of a, an abnormal connection that's formed between two structures in the body. So what happens is, is a gallstone can actually break through into that fistula and then make its way into the small bowel, essentially bypassing the biliary tree. Then it can travel through the small bowel, as we show here. And then we kind of, this is the duodenum here. Eventually it makes its way down to the ileum. And then it gets into the ileocecal valve and obstructs that. And so what you have is blockage of the ileocecal valve. Now, this usually results in small bowel ileus because you're not moving, you know, you're not moving things along. Very different presentation. You're not going to have that right upper quadrant pain, those types of things. It's going to be more right lower quadrant pain. You're going to have ileus, those types of things. That's going to be the type of presentation uh, that you're going to see. So if we come back to the answer choices here. So the cystic duct, remember we covered in the anatomy, the cystic duct drains the bile duct and then joins with the, the common hepatic duct to then form this common bile duct. 
So obstruction of that leads to buildup of bile in the gallbladder. You get cholecystitis. Again, right upper quadrant pain, positive Murphy sign usually. Definitely could see increased white blood cell count, increased bilirubin, increased alkphaz. Usually the ALT and AST though are going to be normal, unlike how they are in this patient. Common bile duct, this is our answer. Obstruction leads to buildup of bile and possibly development of bacterial infection that then ascends. It sends eventually into the liver, so you have fever, increased white blood cell count, increased bilirubin, increased alkphos, increased liver enzymes. This is what's this patient has what's called Charcot's triad, which is actually kind of a clinical diagnosis for the ascending cholangitis. So you have fever, right upper quadrant pain, and jaundice. So these all three together are what's called Charcot's triad and point to ascending cholangitis, which is this patient's diagnosis. The main pancreatic duct, again, this is a patient, they're gonna present with pancreatitis. They're going to have your kind of boilerplate presentation of pancreatitis. So because again, it's obstructing that pancreatic duct. So they're going to have epigastric pain, fever. They could have increased white blood cell count. Their lipase will definitely be increased. Normal bilirubin, alkphos, and ALST, because this usually doesn't affect the liver. It's, it's more of a pancreatic issue, even though it's involving the biliary tree. Lastly, that ileocecal valve that we talked about, this is a result of gallbladder inflammation, creating a cholecystoenteric fistula between the gallbladder and the small bowel. The gallstone passes through that fistula and then eventually travels through the small bowel and then eventually obstructs that ileocecal valve. You can also see air in the gallbladder on ultrasound as well. Again, this is a patient that has a common bile duct obstruction as a result of a gallstone and then developed ascending cholangitis. All right, that's all I have for you this time. Be sure to check out all the Da Vinci Cases videos available on our YouTube channel and our website, dviacademy.com. The PDF notes for every Da Vinci Cases is also available on our website. Also be sure to check out our podcast, The Da Vinci Hour, where we interview attendings and residents across medicine to learn more about their experiences, their specialties, and to get their insights on navigating a career in medicine. You can find the Da Vinci Hour podcast on our website, or any platform where podcasts are found. Lastly, you can find all of our video courses and corresponding outline form of books on our website. Don't forget to use the discount code DC20 for 20% off.